Hello everyone and welcome to another Living Word broadcast. I'm so glad to have you with us on today. Let's open up today's uh, message with a word of prayer. Would you bow your heads with me please? Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you. I bless you and I praise your holy and righteous name. Father, I pray right now that someone, oh God, would be blessed on today, oh God, as a result of the word of God that goes forth. I pray, oh God, that you continue to bless, strengthen, and encourage your people, all your people everywhere, all over this country and all over this world. I pray for those that are suffering, those that are less fortunate than we are, those, oh God, that need comforting. Send forth your comforting spirit oh, right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for all things. I thank you, oh God, for your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you, oh God, for how that you have kept us even up to this time. Now, Lord, I ask that you would word my mouth. Give me what to say and how to say it in the spirit of love and meekness with clarity of speech and explanation. And, Father, I'm going to be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. Again, I want to say hello and uh, uh, happy Father's Day to all of our fathers on this day. Uh, I thank God for each and every one of you. I thank God for all the fathers at the Living Word Church. Amen. I know that some of us may have lost our fathers, uh, but we thank God for fathers anyway. Amen. Because if it was not for them, we wouldn't be here. And most of all, we thank you, O oh God, our Heavenly Father. And for all that you do, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Now we're going to get right into the message on today. I like to use for a subject, what shall I render? What shall I render? We want to go to the, uh, I believe, the 116th division of Psalms. And I started at that 12th verse. 116th division of Psalms. And start at the 12th verse. And the Bible reads thusly. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? What? That first word of the, of the scripture, what? What is a, encompasses, encompasses a lot. What shall I render unto the Lord? What shall I offer to the Lord? How shall I attempt to repay the Lord uh, for all of his benefits toward me? First of all, I think about how good God has been. How that without God I would not be. How that God has healed my body. How that God has made a way when I couldn't see a way. It seemed like every door was shut. I thank God for how that he's healed my body when it was racked with pain. All of those are benefits, my friend. All of those are benefits that God gives us, even when we don't deserve them. So the, 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 the writer says, what shall I render? How shall I repay God? How shall I even attempt to give back all that God has given me? That is a big question. And we all can answer that for ourselves. We need to ask ourselves that question. Lord, what can I do? What can I give you? Well, as we read on here, it says he's given his, his uh, thoughts on it. He said, I will. First of all, we have to have an I will in our spirit. Uh, what will I do? What will I do? Not what's based on what somebody else is doing. Not, not gauging ourselves or comparing ourselves to what somebody... See, God knows what you can do and God knows what I can do. So what will I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits that he has shown toward me? Not the fellow down the street, not the, the preacher, not the deacon, not the other people that you may esteem. But what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits that he's shown toward me? God saved me. God kept me. God blessed me. Even God lifted my spirit when my spirit was down. God, he's done so much. I could go on and on and on about what God has done. So what do I do to, to give God back? How do I do that? Well, the writer says, I will take the cup of salvation. Ah, 
Well, I'm going to stop right there for just a second. I will take the cup of salvation. Well, that's, that's, that's good. That's good. But now here's the question. Here's what we sometimes forget. Here's what we sometimes wrestle with. What's in the cup? What's in the cup of salvation? Sometimes the cup of salvation, sometimes it's a bitter cup. Jesus took a cup with, uh, when they gave him bitter, they gave him vinegar, they gave him, uh, uh, sometimes the cup is not pleasant. I remember as a kid growing up, uh, my grandmother used to give us castor oil. When, it, when winter time was coming around, we'd, see, we'd all line up and, and she'd give us castor oil. And uh, it was bitter. But it was good for us. Amen. But she always turned around and, and had something pleasant, like some orange juice or maybe some grape juice or something, to cut the bitterness. And God does the same thing with us. Amen. Sometimes life can, can be tough. Sometimes life can be hard. Sometimes life can be bitter. But what will I give? I will take the cup, whatever's in it, however it comes, whatever you say, Lord, I'm going to take that cup of my deliverance and call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, we can call, you can call your brother, you can call your sister, you can call your mama, you can call your daddy, you can call whoever you think you uh, want to call. But uh, the great, the best and greatest call we can make is when we call upon the name of the Lord. When we ask God, Lord, come and help. Save me, Lord. Deliver me. Peter knows about that. When he was sinking and when he was walking on the water and he took his mind off of Jesus just for a brief second and he began to sink and he called upon the name of the Lord. He said, save me. Come on here. And that's what we have to learn how to do. But he said, I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. And here he says, here he says it again in the 14th verse, I will pay, I will pay. See, sometimes we don't realize we're always looking to get something, but sometimes we got to pay something. <laughs> we got to sometimes we got to pay. I will pay my vows unto the Lord. You know, sometimes we can do a whole lot of talking and boasting and and testifying. And I don't want to get cute, but some people test the line, but testifying uh, now in the presence of His people. There's certain things that can happen in life. It'll make you, it'll show show us up whether or not we're really who we say we are and what we say we are and whose we say we are. So be careful uh, how we uh, uh, look at that. We say, I will pay my vows. What did you promise God? What did you say you were going to do? It's not like we we paying God back because God don't make no deals with us and, and uh, God don't need nothing from us. He has everything. He has all the silver and gold is his, the cattle on a thousand hills. All that belongs to God and everything that was made was made was made by him by way of Jesus Christ. And so there's nothing that God needs that we can give him, but there's something he wants. And that's us. That's our praise. That's our our reverence. That's 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 our lives. And we want to present our bodies a living sacrifice before God. And that's what he that's what he desires from us. But God is God all by himself. Even before we were even created, God was God already. Amen. Before the beginning, uh, there was God. And if we go to uh, the the the, uh, the uh, verse 17, it says here that uh, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And we'll call upon the name of the Lord. See, there it is. We call everybody out. We want everybody's opinion, uh, uh, opinion. But then, and then when we can't get the result from from calling on everybody but the Lord, then we finally find out that they don't have the answers. And then we call upon the Lord. But we want to change that. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Oh, in spite of what I'm going through, in spite of how it feels and what they're saying and what, how my feelings got hurt and this and that and how they, they looked over me and how they, nobody appreciates me. And all, but I'm going to offer to the Lord uh, the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I'm going to stop what I'm doing. 
I'm going to make that of utmost importance. And Lord, I'm going to thank you. I'm going to give you the praise. I'm going to give you the glory. In spite of what I'm going through, the 34th division of Psalm 7, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Come on and continually, baby. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times, in the good times, in the bad times, when I'm up, when I'm down, when I feel good, when I feel bad, when, I'm, when I got money in my pocket, and when I don't have money in my pocket, no matter what the situation is, when they're talking about me, when they, 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 they're misusing me, and they're abusing me, and all these other things, I'm going to still praise the Lord. That's what I'm, that's, that's, that's I'm going to render unto you, Lord. In spite of what goes and what comes, I'm going to continue to lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows. There it is. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of his people. Amen. Amen. At 34th Psalm. I will bless the Lord at all times. All times. What are you talking about, Peter? Well, the good times. Most people just just have a praise in their heart when things uh, are going well, when you just got a check in the mail, when you when when you just got a good report, or when this good thing happened. But where, where, where the blessing comes in is when we're able to praise the Lord even when we're in adversity, even when we're being talked about. Even when we're being criticized and ostracized and, and we're still able to praise the Lord, we're still able to give him the glory, no matter what is, is, is going on in our lives, amen. When we got hired, we praise the Lord. And when we got fired, we praise the Lord. When we got laid off, we praise the Lord. Or whatever the situation was or, or might be, when we can learn how to be, you know it's good to be in a good place. A good place. A good place is when it seems like everything that can go wrong is going wrong all around you. Your children are being affected, your wife, your, your husband, or, 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 or those that you love, and, and all kind of things are going on, but yet you still have this place of peace. I remember my grandmother used to sit on the front porch. We always had a porch uh, growing up. But anyway, my grandmother would sit on the front porch, and she had this old chair, and I bet that chair had about Ten coats of paint on it, because every spring seemed like she'd put another coat on top of the coat she did last year. But she was sitting there rocking chair, and she would just rock back and forth, and she would be humming a, a hymn, and she would just be at peace. And you didn't even really want to talk to her, because she just looked like you didn't want to disturb where she was at. She was in this place, see, and you didn't really want to disturb that. And so I remember that coming up as a kid, and so I thank God for that. So I'm going to, I decided, I know what the writer wrote, but I'm going to, I decided that I'm going to render unto the Lord my life in more, uh, a more serious way. Uh, all that I have, all that I can do each morning when I wake up and I thank God for another day that he blessed me to see. And I look around, I see my wife and my children, my grandchildren, and, and, and how that I have a roof over my head, I've got food on the table, I have uh, vehicles to drive, and, and just, just counting the blessings. You ever just stop long enough to just, even in the midst of going through, just to just, just start counting all the things that are right and cancel out all the things that seem to be going wrong? And sometimes it's just good to do that. Uh, uh, a lot of times, I, I don't. I don't really like being around people that grumble and complain and murmur and find fault and everything like that. You know what? Uh, I would uh, suggest to you that you really uh, 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 move away from people like that because they will drag down your spirit. You want to be around positive people. You want to be around uh, 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 people that uh, that see the blessings that God have, the benefits, and just being alive. And even the person, uh, let me say this, there may be someone here that's listening today, I don't know, uh, that maybe you're not saved, maybe you're not in church, but, but, but if you're alive and you have breath in your body, and that means that you still uh, have a chance. That means there's, there's still hope for you. Where there's, where, there's, uh, where there's life, there's hope. And so if, you, if, if, if you're that person, then uh, that's a benefit, that God has still given you time to get things right. 
but don't be the person that just keeps hearing the word of God and, and keeps uh, uh, taking in the benefits of God, like the breath you're breathing right now, like like the things that God d d saves you from, the dangers that the enemy, the devil, will try to kill you, even in your sleep. And don't take that for granted. God is so good. And so what shall I render? I would suggest to us that we would render our lives, that we would present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. That's just reasonable. That's reasonable to just say, Lord, I thank you. I'm the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. God, I thank you for another day. God, I thank you, even though I'm not where I should be, even though I fall short. Uh, but God, I thank you for blessing me just another day, just another moment to get it right. And also the mind. I, I thank God for the mind to do that which is pleasing in his sight. Saints of God, God is a good God, and even though we're going through all that we're going through with the pandemic and, and the, 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 the viruses and all the, the, the uh, civil and, and uh, racial unrest, unfairness, and all these things, we've been studying in Bible study all uh, the past couple of months. We've been talking about justice and inju injustices, and, and we've been talking about the wisdom and all those things. Well, all those things are, are concerning God. Don't worry about it. It may look like a certain thing, but everything is not what it looks like. And the Bible says that if God be for you, who can be against you? So even though it looks like certain things, everything's not what it looks like. God is on our side. God is going to bring us out. And it didn't say that we weren't going to, weren't going to go through something. And matter of fact, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. It's because we go to church. It's because we love the Lord. Just because we serve in the Lord. It does not mean that things will not happen in your life. But when the things happen in your life and we know something, uh, we know that all things work uh, to, for the good to them that love the Lord and are the call according to his purpose. See, God has a purpose for everything, even the negative, seemingly negative things that go on in our life. God has a purpose for that. Somehow, some way, God is molding us. God is making us, shaping us, conforming us into his image and how he would have us to be so that we can glean souls, that we could go out and be a blessing to people and draw and put it on somebody's mind. You don't have to back nobody up in the corner. Sometimes people are going through. Uh, uh, I'm telling you, people are hurting. People are waking up to reality. I've heard it said, and I've even said it myself, that, you know, we, we've been talking about the new normal. Well, I got to thinking one day, and I just was meditating on the Lord, and, and, and I said, the new normal. I said, it hasn't been normal in a long time, even before the virus. And the only thing that's, that would be normal is if God is, if, if God is controlling it or anything else. That's just, it's, it's reality, but it's not normal because if it's not what God intended, there's no normalcy in that. Because God created us to, and, and this world and all the things that are in this world for us that we might uh, live and lift him up and glorify him. And that's what it's all about, my friends. That's what it's all about. What shall I render? Lord, I render to you my life, my heart, my whole, my whole uh, spirit, everything about me. And that's what I pray that we would all strive. I'm, I'm not saying that we all we got it all together. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that we should be, uh, our hearts and our minds should be turned that way at some point. That we would, that we would remind ourselves, that we would consider our ways, that we would take a look at ourselves and not be so critical about everything and everybody else that we are inward and all we care about is just what we care about. But God is a God that cares about the whole world and everybody in it. And there are some that have made and are making their own choices. But that's on them. You can never say that God didn't give them a chance. I can never say that God didn't give me a chance. You know, uh, uh, some people say, well, well, I don't, I don't see why uh, this person has it like this and I got it like that. And, well, that's, that's God's business. Wherever you are, whatever state you're in, learn how to be content. Learn how to, and don't get weary in well-doing. If, you're if you're striving to do right, the Bible said, be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, you'll reap if you faint not. 
In other words, that, that due season is when the time is right, when God has accomplished in you or when you have allowed God to accomplish in you his will concerning you. Amen. What shall I render? Lord, I render myself. I want to get better every day. I want to be better tomorrow than I am today. I want to be better uh, 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 next week if the Lord you let me live that long. Uh, I want to be better uh, uh, next week than I am today, this week. And so I thank God for that. And I thank God for all of you all. Living Word Church, I want you to be encouraged. Amen. I want you to know I hope I, I miss you. And I hope you miss me as, as well as I miss you. And I miss, the, I miss us coming together and the fellowship that we have when we come together in person. But, but I want you to be encouraged in, in the fact that I know that the church uh, building is closed, but let's, the, the, the church in us is never closed. The doors of the church are, are continuously open. And I want to put a shout out to each and every member that makes up the body and every person, even those that support the church that may not be members. I want you to be encouraged and strengthened and encouraged. Uh, 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 Brother Davis, if you're hearing this message, I want you, I'm praying for you every day. I'm lifting you up before the Lord, you and your family. Amen. That God will continue to heal your heart, your mind, and your spirit. Amen. We thank God for uh, 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 all that your family and sister Tanya when she was with us all that she, that, uh, she contributed and hey, man I was looking over some of the old uh, videos and I saw the choir and, and I just thank God and so we have to just look at things through another set of lenses like sister uh, 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 Toria wrote a book uh, about how you see things and and so I thank God for that. I thank God for, for how this he has continued to bless me. So when I consider all that God has done and all that God is doing and all that God will do uh, it, according to his word, I can't help but say, God, I, what shall I render? I render myself. And all and I say, Lord, just use me up. Use me up, Lord, and I thank you for it. Now, I never like to, to end a, a message without giving an opportunity to somebody that may not be saved, that you may not, uh, the, the benefits that God has. You have to be in God to receive them. Now, I know that the Bible says he lets the sun, uh, the, the sun shines on the, on the just as well as the unjust. I understand that. Uh, but at the same time, it's a blessing when you can be saved and know and have an assurance in your heart that if you leave this earth today, you know that you would be with the Lord. And so I don't like to end the sessions without giving an opportunity to somebody that maybe you are in a backslidden condition and just happen to tune in. Maybe you don't uh, uh, consider yourself a church person or whatever, but uh, I want you to know that it's a blessing to be saved. It's a blessing to be uh, in God. And so we want to give you the opportunity to Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to receive you. And if you're not saved and you've never prayed to send us prayer, if you would pray this prayer with me in, from the sincerity of your heart, it has to be sincere, not just words, but it has to be sincere from your heart, and you have to mean it. And then after all of this, you have to follow through. If, if you're that person, would you repeat these words after me? Father God, I thank you. Come into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me. Save me from all my sins, from everything, oh God, that I've done that displeased you. Wash me in the precious blood of Jesus. Oh God, right now, I believe in the resurrection power of your son, Jesus Christ. Oh God, let that resurrection power work in me right now. Receive me unto yourself, Lord. Save me from all of my sins. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you. I bless you and I praise you. And help me and strengthen me, Lord, that I might live the rest of my life for you, Lord, striving to please you, striving to do your will in the mighty name of Jesus. And let me be a blessing and an influence to all of those that I come in contact with. Lord, as you mold me and make me and conform me into your righteousness. And Lord, I'm going to be careful to give you all the praise and the glory and the honor. And I thank you, O oh God, as I have prayed this prayer from my heart, that you have received me into the kingdom. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord, amen. If you prayed that prayer, 
like I said before, from in the sincerity of your heart, that I want you to know that God has saved you. Not that he might have, not that he, but God has saved you. Amen. Just like he saved me over 30 something years ago. Amen. And, and if God, there's no seniority. If God, Jesus came today, you will go right along with the rest of us. Amen. That claim to know the Lord. Amen. And I'd like to say to you, welcome to the family. God bless you. All the angels in heaven are rejoicing over one soul. If you're that one soul, God bless you and God keep you. Well, praise the Lord. This is, uh, I'll be giving some information on Living Word Church concerning us going back in. Amen. We're praying and we're putting some things together. But uh, when God gives us the word, you'll be the first to know. Amen. Praise God. Well, this is Pastor Mac signing off, and we will see you next time. God bless you, and God keep you. Amen and amen.